Well, it's good to see you again, and today we are gonna talk about art supplies. So how do we simplify them in a way that still promotes plenty of creativity, but that it's a breeze to clean up at the end of the day and actually engages the kids longer? Wouldn't that be awesome? Let's talk about that coming up next. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from theminimalmom.com and uh, we've kind of been bouncing back and forth between our series on simplifying kids' toys, which this is actually the ninth video, so there's a link to all of those down below, and then also getting ready for back to school. So I'll also put the links for our drop zone and our morning routine, I'll put those down below as well. But today we're gonna talk about art supplies and um, my eight-year-old, almost nine, she loves anything creative. So she creates about three different things per day of artwork or sewing or bracelets or anything like that. And so I'm gonna link to another video. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on what we do with all those creations once they're created. Um, so I'll put a link to that down below. But I know what it's like then for every birthday and Christmas, what does she get? She gets more art supplies and bracelet making kits and frame making kits and birdhouse making kits and sand art and cards. Oh my goodness, every possible thing that you can think of, there is a kit for it now, right? And so especially if you have daughters, you've probably experienced some of this and it's awesome. I, I have not had to buy art supplies in probably like six years because she gets so much of it but it can be a little overwhelming. And this is what her desk looked like then after a little while when we just didn't have a good system in place for it. And so when we first uh, moved into our house, we kind of knew we wanted to set up a space for the kids to be able to do you know, art and creative projects. So even though our house is small, we actually had this kind of awkward space off of our family room and next to my desk area. So it seemed like a logical place to put their art station. And so what do you do when you want to cram a lot of stuff into a little space? You go to Ikea, right? And so we went to Ikea, you obviously recognize um, these shelves and the desk from there. And so we, we got the shelves, we got the desk, and then these big bins. And the problem with bins like this is that they actually hold too much stuff and stuff gets to the bottom and we don't know what's down there anymore and so they just become a dumping zone. And so I knew it wasn't a good long-term solution, but at the time it was just inexpensive and I just wanted to get everything off her desk and, and out of sight, basically. So that was kind of the first system we put in place, but it didn't really work. And now if you have a space that you could set up a dedicated you know, art station, that's great, but we'll also talk about what we can do if we don't have that luxury because that's probably the boat most people are in. So basically, I just had to observe what was working and what wasn't. Like I said, the bins did not work at all. I think kids need to be able to see things to want to play with them. And, and so what I decided to do was actually to break up some of the cubes by adding a couple shelves and then just get some dollar store containers to put the basics. And so what we need to do is just go back to the basics. And so that's step number one is just to figure out what do our kids really need? I'm not going to surprise you with this when I tell you that Honestly, they need very little and almost the simpler, the more creative they are. And so like I said, my daughter loves to create things. And as parents, I think then a lot of times we feel this pressure to kind of like steward these gifts and to help draw these gifts out of them. I've looked into art camps and different lessons and online things that she can do. But at the end of the day, what I've come back to is she is just happiest when she's just creating whether she's sitting at her desk or sitting outside she just loves to create and she doesn't need anyone to facilitate it for her so good news for me I guess and so basically what we've done is just gone back to the basics of having different papers available for them markers crayons colored pencils regular pencils scissors and glue and you would not believe all of the things that they come up with they make play money and playing cards and paper dolls and and all kinds of things I really think that a lot of times we think by getting extra art supplies and stuff that we're promoting creativity in our kids, but I think if we give them actually as few materials as possible, that's when their true creativity comes out. And so then I did switch out some of the big bins just for these baskets and for the shelves down below. And then I just put a few things like bracelet making sets that they use fairly frequently, a paint set. So I put those in the cubes down below, but basically that's pretty much everything they have right now and it's totally keeping them occupied. But here's the big thing. So step number two is to look at Again, if they pulled everything out of our art station, how long would it take me to clean back up? Like I'm, I don't want it to be like over five minutes, right? And so when you're trying to decide what to keep, also think about, okay, how long is it gonna take to clean it up? I want it to be a manageable amount 
for them to clean up so that they can clean it up on their own and I'm not always the one that's having to clean it up because it's way too big of a mess and it's overwhelming for them. All right, step number three is to not feel guilty. So honestly, when we went through their desk and cleaned it out, this was all of the stuff and actually there was still another garbage bag and it's really easy to get to feel guilty and to feel like oh we're so wasteful and we've spent money on things that we don't use and they've gotten gifts that they don't use and I'm a bad parent and am I ever going to get this right but that's really not helpful so I whenever those thoughts start to creep into my head like oh I made a mistake again I just think nope I just need to keep the goal in mind and that is just to have a just nice clean space where the kids can create. They create the best when it's just simple and clean and they can focus on what they're doing. That's what keeps them engaged the longest and they can easily find what it is that they're looking for. So when that guilt creeps in and those negative thoughts say, no, nope, it doesn't matter. Mistakes can go in the past. I will probably still make a few mistakes in this area moving forward, but we're gonna take what we've learned and just move forward. And step number four is just remember that all of this stuff is really easily replaced, at least where we live. One trip to the dollar store and I could have all those cubbies filled right back up again. So don't be afraid to get rid of things if you're just not sure about it. Just get rid of them and probably your kids and you will enjoy the more simplified space. Okay, and then number five, if you don't have a dedicated space where you can set up an art station, well, then we need to figure out something that we can take out and put away. I don't think putting it in a bedroom is a good solution because at least for our kids, they always kind of want to be near the action, either near the kitchen or the family room. And so there's lots of creative ideas out there. I really like this one for having an art cart. That way you can roll it around, take it out to the dining room table or the counter, and then roll it back into a closet. Or this with an over the door shoe organizer, that seems like that could work well too. Or if you just have some shelf space where you can dedicate to having some jars or some containers with the art supplies in it that are easy to get to. But again, you don't have to have a ton of art stuff to promote creativity at your house. I truly think you'll find that as you simplify and cut it back, your kids will probably be even more creative. Well, I hope this helps. And as always, I'd love you to share your thoughts in the comments if you have more questions or if you have ideas. You guys have been leaving the most helpful comments and I really think that it's helpful to other moms too to see you know, what it is that we're struggling with or the solutions that we've come across. So thank you for leaving such thoughtful comments and a thumbs up is always the best compliment that you can give us.